All right, go ahead. What's up, everybody? Another episode of the Joe and Joe Show. My name's Joe Rotunda, assistant matchmaker for main events. Jolene Mazzone, head matchmaker for main events, former NABF matchmaker of the year. Behind the scenes, we have Anthony Haynes, who's our uh, millennial producer. We have Alexis Sullivan. doing shit for this show. Go ahead. Yeah, fuck him. Uh, we have Alexis Sullivan, our creative director. And today, our guest is Dennis Mama's boy, Douglin. Dennis is a beast. He's a super middleweight, 22 and 7 record. And I uh, believe to be the only active fighter trained by his mother. What's up, dude? That's a brand new battery. What's going on, bro? What's going on? What's up? Adam. How's everything? How's everybody living right now? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm actually in South Carolina right now. I'm at my grandmother's house. My grandmother was unfortunately diagnosed with um COVID, so oh, we came out here, yeah, just to show support. So I'm in her backyard. She's in the house, so keeping some distancing. I'm not getting close to her, but as we just want to show her that we support, so we're just out here with them now. Nice. Oh, that's awesome, man. That's cool. You guys went out there. What did you guys drive out there? No, no, we flew, so we were on the plane, which is kind of crazy, too, the airport. I don't know. Is that going to happen right now? Is, is that going to happen right now? I got to go. I'm going. Well, let me go back in the house. Let me move. Is that going to happen right now? Wait, hold on. Tell me stop for a second. Tell me stop for a second. Tell me stop for a second. I'm leaving. Hold on. Hold on. Let me move to the front. Where the car be? Gonna take us on a trip? Yeah, yeah. We can go for a ride. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna stand in the press. I get because you know I'm in the country right now. They mowing grass and all that. You're running from people. You got tank tops on to show your gun. Your Wi-Fi sucks. Yeah. I'm, yeah. This is great. Up. So what's up, Joe? Yeah. Like, All right, Dennis, hit us up when you get back. What, um... <laughs> no, I'm good now. I'm good now. I'm good now. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so look, I feel like we're going to lose okay, you. Now. I don't know what's going to happen, but we're gonna, let's go right to it. We'll no, get into not, the scorecards. You're not going to lose right? me. I'm good. Let's go. All right, cool. So for the All scorecards, right, we're going to go six rounds of boxing-related topics. You're either going to score to 10-9, in which you're in favor, or you're going to deduct a point, in which you're not in favor. Cool. Oh, I like it. I like it. Let's do it. All right. Uh, round one, fighters not having a cup man in their corner. Um, I'm going to score that 9-10. 9-10. Is that how I do it? Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. We got you. I'm going to give 10 to that. Yeah. Everyone should oh, have a cup man, right? Go 100%. All right, all right, cool. What, um, even though, although I like in all, in all, no, I'm saying all my fights, I've only been cutting one. I've been all my fights, I've only been cutting one fight, but I was so happy my cut man was there for that fight. You know what I'm saying, like, granted, all every other fight, I, he wasn't necessary, but the time that he was needed, he was there. So I feel like we need cut man for that. I mean, it's like you feel like at, at some point, because I wasn't getting cut, you're paying somebody for no reason, but you're paying them for that just in case it's, it's insurance. It's like insurance yeah, yeah. on your car. You don't go in there getting exactly. accidents, but you have it. Exactly. Exactly. All right, cool. Uh, exactly. Round two, yeah. fighters trained by their daddies. Um, nine, ten. You're not into that? Nine, ten. Surprise me. I'm not into that. Surprise me. And here's why. Everybody's like, oh, because your mom changed you. You don't think fathers just changed their kids. But is it different? My mom, my mom changed me. Like, well, let me talk about father's first. I feel like a lot of fathers that, that I know, with the exception of like Benavidez, but a lot of fathers I know train their kids because they boxed and they weren't good. You feel me? So like, now they're trying to live vicariously through their kid. Like, yeah. I'm gonna make you a champion because I wasn't a champion. You feel me? So like, now they're trying to live their dreams out through their kids, and and, and it works sometimes, but you're kind of forcing somebody to do something I want to do as opposed until they love it, until they love it. As opposed to my mom, what happened to one of the way she boxed a little bit, whatever, and she got me into boxing just how to defend myself. The one day the guy said to her, I was like, mom, you know what? I think that I really could do this. I want to be a champion. I think I can really be a champion. And she said, okay, let's do it. And she trains me for that. So at any moment, if I told her I want to quit, she she wouldn't want me to quit just because she's like, you're not a quitter, son. Let's see yeah. how much you keep going. But she's not doing it for her. She's not doing it to prove. I'm saying like she never wanted to be a top trainer. She never wanted to be 
training other fighters. Like, she really was just bringing me in the gym to learn how to defend myself. Everything that happened based on, off that was me falling in love with boxing. It wasn't her. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's the difference. Like, I feel like fathers need to stand back. That's all right. Nice. If, if your kid wants to box, get them a trainer. I, I, I feel. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Fuck the daddies. So, round three. Uh... <laughs> Mayweather, Mayweather possibly coming back. I, I think I know. I saw your social media post. You sparred with him recently, so I don't know if you're if you're in favor of him making a comeback or not. Yeah. Um. So I'm gonna go ten nine. I'm in favor of it, and I want to explain that too. As a fan of the sport, I, I I view it in two different aspects, two different perspectives. As a fan of the sport, I'm tired of Floyd. I'm saying like. You're 43 or 42. You did what you did. We think you're great. Retire, bro. Sit down. If you're not going to fight the best, retire. So, 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 hey, but someone listening, as a boxer myself that sees, as an African American boxer too, that sees like this sport rapes you, bro. Like they don't give you the right, the proper chance to get money. Like these managers and promoters make so much more money than you make and you're the one putting in the work. Um, it's so, it's so like annoying. And we finally have a fighter that got the edge, and I'm saying like, there's a boxer now that's milking the game, as opposed to a, a manager of more milking the game. A manager making $300,000 off your fight, but you only made 100,000. I'm saying like, there's a guy now that's a boxer that's making millions that he shouldn't be making. Like, I love it as a boxer. Yeah. I'm saying like, I love that we got a boxer that found a way to milk the game in favor of the boxer. I'm saying, so as a boxer, 10-9, keep going, Floyd. As a fan, Floyd, sit down. And are you, uh, is, are you uh, in favor of it because you can get some of that work in sparring? Um, I mean, that's, that's lit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I'm <laughs> that. again, that's my, but the boxer side of me, yeah. <laughs> the boxer side of me, yeah, keep going, keep getting soft pull fights and, and spar me. Like, it's amazing because he cheats yeah. his sparring partners very well. So, oh, I'm okay. saying, like, we have a great relationship. So, in that aspect, yeah, 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 he, he does. So, um. Yeah, in that aspect, keep going. I'm saying, like, we just, while I've been out here, he's called to check on my grandmother and stuff, make sure everything we got. Like, he's a super good guy as far as that goes. You know what I'm saying? All right, cool. Like, all, all, right, the, all, all the negative stuff that I hear about him in the media, I don't know about it. Right. I've never, I've never dealt with that stuff personally. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, that's all I'm saying. All right, so. I, I believe that happens with any celebrity, athlete, movie star, whatever. Unless you know the person, look, if I'm a celebrity and somebody comes up to me and is asking me for photographs and how do you know I can have a bad day if I'm an asshole or whatever, they're human. So you gotta Exactly. I've I've actually seen that happen to him. I, so check check this out. I was at I was at a fight with him. Um one of his fights out in Samson in Las Vegas. And um I heard him say, he wasn't talking to me, he was talking to security. He said, I heard him say, I'm not going to take no pictures today. I don't really feel like to take pictures today. And the security guard was like, okay, that's fine. So then, in the middle of the fight, like, oh, during his mission, a young kid comes up to Floyd, and well, comes up to the side, and like, I want to take pictures with Floyd. Floyd looks at the young kid, and he's like, you know what, okay. So he gets right. up, and he goes, all right, I'll take a picture. So, because security's about to stop them. But he's like, okay, I'll take a picture. So the young kid takes a picture. People saw it. So they came down to take pictures. So now it goes from him not wanting to take pictures to taking that one picture. Now he's there for 30 minutes taking pictures, taking pictures. So he does like a bunch of pictures. It got to the point where there was another person I wanted to go. He was like, no more. I don't want to take no more. So security stopped that person. That person now felt like, oh, Floyd's an a-hole. Uh -huh, you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Not realizing what this man just went through because of his fame. You know I'm saying like, it's, it's so crazy. I just was dealing with this even on a small scale like for example i'm not famous by any means right now but I, in boxing i'm kind of famous like i'm boxing famous. dennis Everybody dennis 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 boxing, dennis, right dennis. But that, did you have coffee yes, today yes, or a red, yes. did you have coffee or a red bull today holy this shit. is my energy all the time oh this my, my all the god <laughs> go ahead Woo. Wild, bro. <laughs> this, is my, this is my energy all right, we, so, all right, so, i drink no coffee i get it so Floyd, come back. Fuck the media. All right. Round four, YouTubers no. fighting. <laughs> Nine, ten. Not into that? Yes. Not into that. Okay. All right. Not into that. Uh, this should be an easy one. Fighters not making weight. Nine, ten. Not into that. 
All right, last round. Fighters that release footage of knocking out their sparring partners. <laughs> Ten nine. Oh, you like? <laughs> Ten nine. I like it. Listen, we're entertainers. That's entertaining. <laughs> you know what I'm saying like, we're entertainers. You feel me? Like that gets you, that gets people more interested in you. Even though some of the stuff is 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 bull. I actually put a video up on Instagram explaining perspective on that. Like I put a video up on me and somebody up, and I said. What people don't know is this is this man's seventh round. This is my first round. He did six before I got in. But people don't say that kind of stuff. People just post the video to show their good side. So I was like, no, that's he probably he could be better than, but he did six rounds already. I'm saying like, but y'all don't get that. So it's cool to put that perspective out there. But at the same time, if you knock somebody out in the gym, you got it on footage. Please post it. That's dope. If I tell you all the time, if you record me sparring you and you beat me up, post it. Oh, that's so funny. Because right. you have such a, you were so passionate about that answer, I'm not even mad at it. Fuck it, man. No, you Most can't time. be mad at it. Because he made yeah. good, he did in a sense make good, but we're against it. Yeah. You explaining it, you made some points. I'll give you that. I mean, I, mean, it's I don't agree with it being done, but I can't argue, you can't argue it. You can't. Mm-hmm. All right, fuck it, post that shit. All right, that's it, man. <laughs> Jolene's, Jolene's got the lightning round for you. All right, this is gonna okay, be the lightning go. round, and you're gonna it's gonna you're gonna pick one or the other. Okay. Okay. Hot dogs or hamburgers? Hamburgers. McDonald's or Burger King? McDonald's. Trump or Biden? <laughs> Biden. <laughs> Mayweather or Whitaker? Ooh. Come on, bro. Mayweather. Mayweather. <laughs> because I know him. Because I know him. Right, it's it's been good talking to you. We'll talk to you another time. I won't get it. Oh, I love, I love Whitaker. I'm a big fan of Sweet Pea. Rest in peace. I'm a big, big fan of Sweet Pea. But it's just because I know Mayweather. I have a personal relationship with him. So it's a little different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, That's the only reason. But I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of Sweet Pea. You know I'm saying? Like, he's, I grew up wanting to be like Sweet Pea. Granted, I'm nothing like him, but I grew up wanting to be like him. <laughs> I uh, wanted to be, I wanted, I wanted to be that sexy, but I'm not. But whatever. That's all right. You're a little sexy with that tank on. All right, Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> Ooh, Jay Z. Good for you. Think about that. <laughs> Summer or winter? Summer. Offense or defense? Offense. Talking or texting? Talking. West Coast or East Coast? East Coast Jersey. Fuck that right, you're lucky. <laughs> Who would you rather fight, a righty or a lefty? Righty. Left hook or right hook? Right hook. Holyfield or Tyson? Mm, Tyson. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Jolene or Joe? Who? Jolene or Joe? <laughs> Joe and Joe. Oh, oh he did it right. Oh, it's <laughs> All right, oh, now. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. All right, now this is something that I see, and I just want to see if you could do this. Take your fingers like this, Dennis. Look like this. Yeah. Okay, do this. Okay. Mm-hmm. Put, it on, put it on your chin right there. Put it on your chin. Uh, uh, very clever. Clever. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you very said not clever. Take However, I listen. <laughs> that I was listen. to see if you listen. My mom, my mom is my trainer. I have no choice but to listen. I get beat up all day. That's so true. I have to listen. <laughs> All right, so what um, what what's your deal now? Are you retired? Or are you still fighting? Am I retired? Never. I'm not gonna retire until I'm a champion, man. Like I'm still fighting. Um, I'm gonna be I. I I'm gonna be a world champion. I hardly believe that. Um, I still think I'm the best. I middle way. I think I'm the best. People say to me, "How are you the best? You haven't lost it." And I'll explain it. I'm the best because 
I'm the best. If you give me eight weeks and you give somebody else eight weeks and I train and we train and it's the best version of ourselves getting the ring, I feel like I'll be anybody on my side. But if I'm BSing and I have two weeks and you have six weeks and I'm playing and I still fight because I'm a fight, I'm a warrior at first. So I want to fight any fights. So I take stupid fights. If I take a fight and I wasn't in the gym for a camp and you had a camp, yes, you can beat me. So Ben, not knocking Benavidez, Charlotte, any of them, because they're all great fighters. But Benavidez had way more time than I had, I, and I lost. Charlotte had more time than I had, I lost. You know what I'm saying, but give me eight weeks, give somebody else eight weeks, I'll beat anybody that's my size. I feel like so. I'm not gonna stop. I realize that I'm not gonna get that that whole eight week camp for fights. I realize that because of my positioning, I'm gonna always get the call for two week fights. So I've decided to live my life in eight week camps. Um, an eight-week camp lifestyle. So the way I live life now is I have we have it written out for eight weeks what I'm doing, what I'm training, what I'm training. So like by the end of the eight weeks, we have a set date. We say this is our proposed fight date. I'm in tip-top shape for that date. After that date, I take a couple days off, then I start the whole thing over. So now I'm at week one again, sorry, week one camp again, but I'm still in eight-week shape camp. So like if I get a call and I'm only on week two, I might only be doing week, week, week two training, but I just got finished the camp. So like two weeks ago. So it's nothing for me to get right back in that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm okay, saying like, this, I'm actually, this, this call was this actual interview was actually to hire you for main events, but since you're still fighting, we can't do that. We were gonna surprise you, so we're no, gonna no 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 hire me, hire me, hire me. I can do I would I wanna work with you guys. Like I I love you guys. I love so, that. Dude, I, it was it was between you and Darrell. We're gonna have to go with Darrell, man. It just yeah, Darrell's getting hired now. <laughs> it's just the way it worked oh, out, bro. I would disown you guys. I no, we just, you guys. we just interviewed Darrell and he answered right. He we said are you the... right? and he said no. If I have the opportunity to work for a great promotional company like Main Events, then no, absolutely not. And we said you're hired. Uh... Man, I mean, if, if that is real, and that's what you guys do, I guess I understand. Bro, we're fine. But the thing about you, me man. Is, I'm, we're fine. I'm, 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 <laughs> what, oh, what's, oh, um, Thank you. what's what's one fight that you that you never got and you always wanted, and that you still may get? One fight. Like, who's one fighter that you always wanted yeah, to fight? You didn't get it. I you still could get it. Um, to be honest with you, there is none. There is a fight that I want back, but there's no fight that I have, that I that I want still. So I just want to be a champion. There's nobody that I see that I personally really want to fight. I want whoever I want to be. I want to be the best. I want to. So whoever you think is the best at my weight, that's who I want to fight. That's it. I'm saying there's no personal vendettas. So if I could take any fight back, I want to fight Benavidez again. And I like Benavidez. Me and him are still cool. But I think he's great. I think if I have have an AV camp, it'll be a super tough fight, but I think I'm better than him. I'm saying I think I could be Benavidez. So that's the fight I want back. I want to fight Benavidez again. That's it, bro. I want to fight all my all the people, everybody that beat me, I want to fight them again. Give me a full let me let me train for them for real and show the world what I really can do. Because I feel like right now the world has no idea how good I am. They look at me when I was when I was with you guys when I fought Vaughn, everyone, no one gave me a chance in that fight. But I had y'all gave me enough time. And I got in the ring with Vaughn, and I made that fight easy. Even after that fight, nobody has beaten Vaughn the way I beat him. You know what I'm saying? Like, he fought the other kid, the 7-year-old kid, who's really good, in my opinion. That changed the buddy. He's really good. That was a good fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it was a good fight. It was a split decision win. Nobody's beating Vaughn like I did. And then, so everybody's like, <laughs> and then, like, and then, like, yeah, that's the name. Yeah. And then I fought my last fight, my guy. Everybody's like, oh, Dennis should destroy him. But I lose to him. So they're like, so, like, which one is the fluke? Is the fluke him beating Vaughn or is the fluke my guy beating him? People don't know how good I am because I'm so all over the place with how I'm training and my consistency and my dis my discipline. But that's done. I'm disciplined. I'm training. So, I want to fight all these guys over. So, I all can right, see in the world. You're making, Joe, you're making Joe sweat. Dude, I'm in, my, I'm in my back room and there's no AC. <laughs> and I'm fucking melting, bro. So, whatever. And and no lie, and you hear you hear the fire and me talking. You're like, damn man, I love this kid. I love this kid. That's how you, you're that's how you feel right now. You're firing me up, bro. I'm ready to go to the gym. 
What um? <laughs> who's your number? Who's your one, two, and three right now, pound for pound? Pound for pound, one, two, and three. I'm gonna go. Lomachenko is number one for me. Um. Canelo is number two. Terence Crawford is number three. Agreed. Joe, oh, you're you, a hater, bro. I'm not a hater. You are. Ter- Who was should was should one was should one? He doesn't two, like. He's not. He's a Terence Crawford hater. I am not. That is not so true. This is going to be Joe straight. Number one, um, Arthur Abraham. Number two, he's <laughs> Arthur Abraham. Number three. Yo, I had Hello. so I threw. Bro, sit down and try to write the top 10 pound for pound in the sport. It's fucking impossible when you get to 9 it and is, 10. It it's fucking, it it's just fucking not there, man. So I threw Arthur Haberham in the mix when he was doing his thing at 68, and they won't fucking, <laughs> they won't drop it, bro. Bro, it was a wild card. I threw him in, I was being nice. You did it a few times. Wow. So, wow. so anyway, yeah, I don't, I don't think Crawford. That's very interesting. Now, I just... <laughs> I just don't think Crawford's. Take number three. Now I kind of question. I kind. My, if we really want to go crazy, we could debate. I'll win. It's it's Canelo number one, Bomachenko number two, and it's Usyk number three, and it's not debatable. It's just not. All right. All right. All right. All right. right. Yeah. Why? Why is is Canelo number one? Rap sheet. Rap sheet. Rap sheet. Okay. It's no one's got that resume. No, I'm not mad at so Canelo number the, one. I'm not mad at Lemachenko. I'm not. I I like Usyk, but who has he fought at heavyweight? With uh, it doesn't matter. He didn't need to go to heavyweight. It's what he did at cruiserweight. He wiped out the division starting from his first fight. He wiped them out, man. Maris Breedis, fucking. No, I like Usyk. I like. I like. Dude. I like Mike Hunter. Like I. I like. I like. I like. I like Usyk. Uh, I think Usyk is great. I'm. I'm a little. I don't know if I feel how I feel about Canelo being number one, although Canelo is really, really, really good and his resume is great, but is it great if we analyze it, if we re- really look at it, is it as great as we're saying it is? Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. Who it had, is. Who, who, did, who did he, listen, and I'm a big Canelo fan, and I think Canelo is great, but who did he be in their prime? Lara. Lara. Arisandu yeah, Lara. Did, like, did, did, he, did he win that fight? Did he win that fight? Yes, I checked box rec. I checked box rec. He won. He All right. <laughs> so, over, a quarter, a quarter, According to boxing, you won. But I mean, I would love to sit down with you one day and seriously sit down on the couch and watch that fight. Let's and let's go score around by round. And and uh, I would love to see you say that Canelo won that fight. No, no, you're right. I'm listen, listen. I'm not all, all bullshit aside. That fight was really fucking close. Uh, Lara probably could have taken it. And I don't remember it round for round. It was a close fight. But look, dude, he's taken out and taken on everyone in multiple weight classes. The guy's been, and he's still a baby, man. He's still so young. He might not even peak yet. You know what I'm saying? But again, but but again, here going back to that, did he take on everyone? Because he moved up to one sixty eight and he fought Rocky Fielding. You feel me? Like one sixty eight, one sixty eight, one sixty eight was loaded. One sixty eight was loaded with talent. Bro, loaded but Dennis, talent. say he never fought Rocky. It doesn't matter. The, the Rocky matter. Fielding fight holds no weight on his rap sheet right now because he did so much at fucking sixty. Like, look what Triple G okay. was boxing boogeyman for so long. And he was like, all right, hold my beer. I got this. Takes out Triple G twice. <laughs> no, I, you know what I'm saying? Come I, on. All right, well, look. I love, he doesn't, I, love I don't disagree with you. Argument. No, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Okay. I don't don't, disagree get, with Joe, don't get Joe all excited. He has no air conditioning right now. I, 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 I like it. I like it. His neck is fucking red. His face I is can really, a heart attack. <laughs> Listen, listen, I could talk boxing literally all day. So I agree with you on the, tri- the Triple G fights. I love Canelo for them because I think he won both. You know I'm saying I'm probably one of the only people that think so. And I love how, how he fought the first fight, which was closer. And everyone complained, oh, you're Mexican, but you're running. Right. He said, okay. And the second fight, he stepped to Triple G. Like, I love the adjustment they made to give people what they want and still win the fight a different way. Like, I think that was great. So if you get, if you led with the Triple G argument, I would have gave it to you already. But you... Led with the he fought everybody in any way that that's what you lost me. But the no, no, argument was good enough to he fought show. a guy in Lara that no one wanted to fight. Yeah, no, no one, no one, no one wants to fight. He Lara. fought Trout when nobody wanted to fight him. Yeah, you know yes, this is this is true. But again, with both hey, of those fights, he, I'm 
I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure he won either of those fights. I was at the Trout fight, and I'm watching the fight, and I'm like, again, Trout, he just checked oh, boxing. Good. Ran it towards the end. Uh, <laughs> but hold on, so let's end it on this. On the flip side, don't get me started on, on the flip side, I don't disagree that Lomachenko could be number one because he's he's that good. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I think our beef is really at number three. Our beef isn't at Canelo. Our beef is at number three with Crawford. He shouldn't be there. Maybe he's number five, but. Look at he's number. It is what it is. I win, you lose. Let's do. You actually lost, Jeff. You know what? I'm not gonna fucking put me on here. I'm not. I'm not mad at the Terrence Crawford argument too, though. So he's right. I'm not mad at that. Like that. That might be personal preference over. Right, how about okay, this? How about personal this? preference. So it's not winning or losing. I think Crawford at three. You think Usyk? End of story. Yeah. No, that's hold on. Hold on. Right. There's still more to the story. One thing. Go but ahead. if Crawford fights all those, all the guys at 47, your Porters, your Garcias. Crawford beats them all. Like Crawford is fucking nasty. I'm just, Absolutely. I'm really just basing it now off, off resumes at this point. But Crawford wipes out. Who you but to be honest, to be, to be honest with you, to be honest with you, you guys what? are who builds, who who makes people's resumes look good or not. Not even really the actual resume because Crawford. But who's Crawford's beat is actually really good, but people kind of downplay it because. Boxing media downplays it. He's being the, the Dominican Olympian. That's a big deal. American. The people that he's being are good fighters, but they're just underlooked by boxing media. So yeah, now definitely. we look at them. Yeah. The, so we look at them as like they're not that good. He fought some good guys. You know what I'm saying? And he just made them look easy. When he fought Gamboa, Gamboa was scary at that yes. time. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. And you feel like he fought he fought some good people, but it's just that they don't get the credit that they deserve, so we don't give him the credit that he deserves. Right. Yeah, Joe right, likes so to follow wrong. the media. All right, so you're wrong. So, um, how'd you end up getting into boxing? <laughs> uh, my mother, my mother, brought me, I, got, I got into a street fight. I was eight years old. I got into a fight with a 10 year old. He beat me up. My mother told me I was sore. So, she brought me to the gym to learn how to defend myself. All right. I went easy. to the gym. I hated it. But, um, but, um, yeah, but I, I hated it. But I'm super competitive. So, when another kid came in the gym and got better than me and he beat me up too. I was like, you know what? I'm going to train really hard to beat him up, then I'm going to stop. So I trained really hard. I beat him up, and I was like, you know what? I, I'm not bad at this. I want to fight. So then I fought, and I beat up another kid. I actually did my very first amateur fight was against um, Ronnie Vargas, rest in peace, who died. He yeah. was a great fighter. And mm -hmm. um, he, um, he, he's, yeah, everybody called him Venezuela. And he was a great fighter. And he was my first amateur fight. He was 4-0. I had no fights, and they were like, this kid is really good. Do you want to fight him? I'm like, whatever, let's fight. And I beat him, and everybody's like, yo, you're really good. And I, that's kind of like how my career started, just fighting people that nobody thought I could beat because they were already kind of known in amateur boxing in New York. And I was beating them. I'm like, you know what? I, I think I, I think I want to really do this. My mom was like, okay, let's really do it. And here I am. So I tell people this all the time. If I was to stop right now, which I'm not, but if I was to stop right now, I've already accomplished so much more than people like me because I have a mom in my corner who, although she boxed a little bit, she never wanted to be a trainer. She's not a boxing trainer. She just, I told my mom I want to box and she started becoming a boxing trainer as I was like, we started learning together almost. Like I said, I want to box. She wasn't my trainer at the time. She started just watching other trainers, listening to what they said, thinking of what makes sense, what doesn't make sense. And she just like became this elite trainer along with me as I'm going up in the fights. And then they got to the point where I'm like, Ma, I want to train with you only. Like, you're great with this. And she she still was like, like, I forced her on her training. People don't even notice. Like, she's still was like, uh, I don't know. Like, I'm I'm doing well being like a side trainer at the house. But I don't want to train you main time. I don't think I know enough. I'm like, you doing know enough. And let's do this together. And she's like, okay. And we started doing it together. And I won nationals. I became ranked. I made it this far as a pro. All over the trainer that I had no idea that they wanted to be a trainer. So really, I've accomplished, like, you can make a movie off my life right now, but I'm still going to be a champion because she deserves to have a world champion. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I want to do this for her and well, myself. But, like, her, her, our journey is so lit. That's it. Your Who's mom. your favorite win of your career? So we need, we need a movie or at least, at least a YouTube documentary. All right, all right. As a pro. Your mom is a your mom's a cool motherfucker though. Throwing that out there, she is. Your mom's cool. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. What was thank your you, favorite you. win of your career in two words or less? Um, 
Yvonne Alexander. Now, now I'm thinking about it. Yvonne Alexander and just because. Those are two words. Just because. Can I say something? You were a you were a nine to one underdog for that yes. one fight. It was crazy. I I know. I know that. And it, the crazy thing about it is like I was such a huge underdog to everybody but us. Like I looked at it like, oh my God, KVD, I'm getting this fight. I'm going to kill this guy. But nobody else in the world thought that. And that's yeah. why that's my favorite fight. Because I looked at it and I was like, this this kid can't beat me. No disrespect to Vaughn, because Vaughn's a great guy, a great fighter. But yeah, I'm looking no. at him. I'm like, wait, him? And everybody's like, you fighting Vaughn? Dude, you're fighting Vaughn? Oh my God, it's a tough fight. I'm like, it's not a tough fight though. Like, I have a full camp. Like, I'm going to kill this kid. Like, Making so the fight. I felt super Making. confident going into the fight, but nobody else did. Making the fight going into it, my theory was Bull needed to fight somebody that he needed to figure out, right? Because you need to learn. That's what you're doing as you're coming up. You're learning. So my feeling was if he could figure you out within the first couple of rounds, then, he, ha you know, it's a good fight. If he can't figure you out, it would be all downhill. So that was my thought going into it. But it was a good All right. All right. See, the way I look at it is the way, oh, my fault, Jamie, mean, because you're good. I'm just sweating. <laughs> um, like, now, the way I was looking at it is like, if you looked at, if you looked at me, the me that fought Benavides, Von Alexander beats him. If you look at the me that fought Charlo, Von Alexander beats him. And that's why I tell the world that I think I'm the best because if I, like, Von Alexander had a full camp and it was a different fighter. You know what I'm saying? Like, the people don't get to see that. The people don't get to see a locked in, no drinking. Because I used to drink, but I don't drink at all anymore. But I used to drink every day and then come in the gym and spar and beat people up. And that gave me a false sense of confidence. And, like, I, that's how I took my kid. But uh, trying to focus me, people that people think are great, I'll make it look easy. That's how I truly feel. You know what I'm saying? So, and I think Von Alexander is example, an example of that. I'm saying like yeah. even Anthony Durrell, although like the Anthony Durrell fight ended when it did, and I didn't even get a full camp Anthony Durrell, but I was gonna be him. You know what I'm saying like I right. felt yeah. in my heart I was gonna. Well be said, Durrell. well and said, well said. said. All right, real. We only have Thanks. a couple minutes left, Thanks. and I want to get this in. A lot of people probably don't know that when Canelo Alvarez fought Kovalev, <laughs> it's went so bad, bro. <laughs> when he, when Canelo fought Kovalev, Jolene, I guess Jolene orchestrated the whole thing, brought you in as an intern for fight week. Yeah. Which you fucking, which you killed, by the killed way. Not it. even just saying that because you could beat me up. You killed the shit. Like, you, you did so good. What was your take on that? Like, <laughs> that, was that a cool experience? Like, would you want to get into the promotional side? Whew. It was, it was, a, it was such a dope experience. I appreciate Jolene so much for that experience. Um, I learned so much from the, on the other side of boxing, what you guys do. Because I thought fight week for you guys was just chilling the entire time. But I got to really see how much work you guys do. And I just saw a little bit of it. I didn't even see all of the work you guys did. Cause I was doing, I was the gopher. So I didn't really get to see all the stuff you did, but I got to see that you guys work so much. And there's so much that goes on behind the scenes with boxing and I want to be a part of it. I feel like I'm boxing is a part of my life now and I want to do it forever, but I'm not going to fight forever. So I want to get to this side. I want to do what you guys do. You know I'm saying so I appreciate Jolene so much for, for giving me the opportunity. You for letting me, Run around with you, do your stuff. Kathy for taking a chance with me. Like, I appreciate you guys. So give me the job. <laughs> All right, here's our final question. Wait, we're Did not doing we're not we're not doing what better dead or nah? Yeah, we could do it. All right, all right. Wed better dead. You know what that means? Mar wet, bed, or dead. Marry, Ed. sleep with, or kill. Okay. Caitlyn Jenner, Hillary Clinton, Rosie O'Donnell. Great dime pieces, bro. Wow. Um, I'm I'm killing <laughs> Jenner. No disrespect Solid. to anybody, but that's just me. Um, Solid. <laughs> um, sleep. <laughs> I'm sleeping with. Uh, be a freak, I'm sleeping you know? with Rosie O'Donnell. I'm married. Oh, Hillary be a freak. Oh, you know what? That's maybe though. Maybe. You know what? I'm you know, I think I'm gonna sleep with I think I'm gonna sleep. No, no, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep I'm gonna marry Hilly because she is a freak, so I'm like I got that forever now. 
you're gonna marry Hillary, sleep with Rosie. Plus, Hillary probably has more money, the better uh, insurance claim at the end for you. Exactly. Exactly. Solid picks, bro. Exactly. Boss move. Boss move. <laughs> All right. Final question. It got to be quick. If you could punch, slap, trip, or lock anybody in this business in a room, who would it be? Like you could pick one person and you could either punch them, slap them, trip them, or lock them in a room. In the box. Am I locking them in a room that I'm in or locking them? I'm no, locking them in a room and throwing them in the key. By themselves. Oh, this is really, you're really going to get me in trouble. Come on, punk. Just this one. Sure. I could punch, slap. Oh, that's tough. You don't Let's have to see. pick a person. I would for lock. Thing, just one person. 85 degrees here, bro. We you gotta have the name, just <laughs> fucking say it. I don't, I don't have the name. I don't know. Um, I really. Is like there anybody you I, dislike? I don't know. Uh, you haven't been in boxing. No, I don't dislike. Like seriously, I. No, I just look at everything from different perspectives, and I understand why people do certain things. Um, uh, hmm. Oh, you know what? I would. Oh, the person, Rick Glazier. Rick Glazier, I would do all of them. I would do all of them, dude. <laughs> he's a popular one. That's he's what he's very is, popular. <laughs> wow. Really? Is that really a, a very popular answer? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what it be. Yep, 100%. Wow. <laughs> 100%, that's what it is. All of it. That's Punch, great. slap, kick, lock in the room, throw it in. Well, Dan, thank you for taking the time out. I hope your grandmother gets well. We'll be praying for her. Tell your mother we said hello. And, you know, you're always great to deal with. We love you. You were a pleasure when you were with us. And hope on the road you'll be having a job at main events. I hope so. I hope so. See you guys again. All right. Thank you. All right, buddy. Bye. Later, bro.